What's up Hogwarts Legacy Gamers and welcome to the RE Visuals YouTube channel where you'll always find high quality visuals and high quality tech. And today we're going to visit one of my favorite games to release on PC this year, Hogwarts Legacy. And the main goal today is to see how budget you can go with your PC to get this game to run at their own listed minimum settings that they have on their website. So will the game be even be able to run at the 720p 30fps they state on their website or will it just come to a screaming halt forcing you to spend more money on a PC? Well, you might be very surprised because I have put together a PC that only took $220 of my own money and well, the results, they're pretty staggering but not as staggering as today's sponsor. With VIP URCD key, you can install and activate Windows for only 16 bucks. Hey, that's pretty good. It's fast, easy, and 100% legit. You can now enter my new promo code for 2023, RAV25, which will now save you 25% on your purchase. So get rid of that Windows activation watermark and get your system activated today. It also works for Windows 11 as well. Check the links in the description. All right, right off the bat, let's talk about the minimum requirements to play Hogwarts Legacy. For the CPU, they suggest either an Intel Core i5 6600 or an AMD Ryzen 5 1400. For RAM, they suggest to use the usual 16 gigs of DDR4. And for the GPU, they suggest either a GTX 960 4 gig from Nvidia or an AMD RX 470 4 gigabyte from AMD. So now that doesn't sound like a whole lot, does it? Being the most of that hardware is definitely more than a few years old at the time of filming this video, you know, and with that in mind, you would think we should be able to scrounge up some really good deals in the used market to get a capable PC for running cheap. And you would be right. The first thing I did was scour eBay for OEM systems that come equipped with the i5-6600 and 16 gigs of RAM. This is when I made a huge discovery. I stumbled on the Dell Precision Workstation 3620. Now, not only does this system come with either an i5-6600 or the equivalent Xeon processor, it also comes with a DDR4 platform that includes 16 gigs of RAM as standard and also has NVMe SSD support. Best part, I was able to get the whole thing for just 170 bucks after shipping and taxes. Not a bad deal as far as I'm concerned. Next, we have the issue of finding a graphics card that is suitable for the system. So the Precision Workstation that I bought actually came with the GPU already installed, but it was a very old RX 340X with only two gigs of video memory. So I knew it wouldn't be able to handle Hogwarts Legacy at all. So we had to go a different route. With that in mind, I took to my local market and snagged myself a steal. I was able to secure an RX 574 gig and a super small ITX form factor for only 50 bucks. I was actually able to find this specific card for cheaper than any of the GTX 960 or RX 470 listings I saw, so I figured this was a no-brainer since it was a better card anyway. And the best part about this card is that it only requires a single 6-pin PCIe connector, and it just so happens that the Precision Workstation 3620 has that connector coming off the stock 365-watt gold-rated power supply that it comes stock with. Very awesome. So with the parts secured, here's the system that we'll be testing. The Dell Precision Workstation 3620 that I bought features an Intel Xeon E3-1270 V5 running at 3.6 gigahertz, which is basically the workstation equivalent to the i5-6600, but instead of four cores and four threads, the Xeon features four cores and eight threads. This system also has 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM running at 2133 megahertz, it has a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD, as well as an extra one terabyte hard drive for extra storage. Then, like I said, the GPU we're going to be running is the RX 570 4 gig, and I acquired all of that for just $220 total, out of the door, including all taxes. And before you guys go, Ricky, what about Windows? Well, this Dell system actually came with a fresh install already on it that I had no idea about, so I didn't even have to buy that after a fact which is pretty common to find with pre-owned workstations like this. So sometimes you just get lucky. And now with all the hardware and everything sorted, let's install the game and get down to some testing. Okay, and now that we are inside the game, the first thing we gotta do is go ahead and figure out what settings we wanna do for our first run. And because we wanted to do this exactly how they had the settings on their website, I decided to downscale it to 720p and put all settings to low like they suggest to see if we can even get that 30 FPS that they say we can. And right off the bat, as we do our first part of our test here in front of the Hogwarts Castle Ground, 
backgrounds, you can see we are getting a lot more than 30 FPS. We are getting closer to 80 right now as we walk up towards a character right there. And actually, you guys, the game does not even look that bad either at 720p. Taking this even further and going for a broom flight, you can see with even all these things on the screen right here, we are still getting close to 75 average FPS flying around the castle, around the Black Lake and all that, where typically your, your FPS will drop quite a bit because uh, flying, you know, takes a little bit of, uh, of, of your resources to do. But nonetheless, as we head inside the castle, you'll see that our FPS gets even higher and we are actually solid, like over 80 FPS as we're in the Great Hall right here. And even further, when we get to the Great Staircase. Now, the Great Staircase area can actually be pretty taxing on your system because there's a lot of things going on, you know, moving pictures, the staircases move all the time. There's a lot of students around too. So you can see right here, we're getting like over 100 FPS sometimes. So that's really cool to see. But if you guys have played this game a bunch, you will all know that what really matters the most for your frame rate is when you go to areas like Hogsmeade, where everything is extremely taxing on your system, especially your GPU and CPU. Um, and here, you know, you can see a bit of pop in there and whatnot because of the downscaling, but either way, we are still averaging over 75 FPS and it's very, very smooth. No really crazy frame dips or anything like that. And honestly, this combo is handling the game well enough that I think we can actually bump the settings up a little bit. So the first thing I did was go ahead and take it from 720p up to 1080p with no upscale or anything like that, just straight 1080p, low settings to see what would happen. And this did absolutely hit our frame rate just a bit as we're now only able to hover right around the 60 FPS mark which you guys is extremely playable of course that is the mark that you want to hit with something like this so uh, just in this little spot of the map we're able to hit 60 and now let's move on to broom flight again and hopping on our broom real quick you can see we're hovering right around the high 50s to just right around 60 FPS like before with a couple dips here and there just because of all the things on the screen when you're trying to fly a broom around and just like last time as we enter the inside of the castle with the great hall and the grand staircase you can see that we're easily getting 10 more FPS on average, uh, getting up into the 70s or you know mid 60s every time, which again, extremely playable and you're actually able to run it at full 1080p. And of course, as we enter Hogsmeade, we end up getting somewhere right around the high 50s just barely not able to make 60 average FPS because of uh, the frame drops we're getting in Hogsmeade because of all the different details you're getting. And as you see right here with some character models, sometimes the faces don't pop in correctly and whatnot, but I think I have a fix for this that'll allow us to actually get a bit more FPS and not sacrifice quality. So let me go ahead and tweak some stuff. So what I ended up doing was leaving it at 1080p low settings, but then I ended up using the AMD FSR 1.0 upscaler on ultra quality mode because we're using an older AMD card. So using these settings, I'm wondering how much we can net as far as FPS. And with these new settings, we see an immediate improvement in every single area of play in this game, including just walking around the ground, to flying on your broom uh, we already see more than we were getting last time to then entering the castle again you're seeing over 100 FPS in certain areas or like, you know, high 80s around the castle. And then, of course, when we hop into Hogsmeade again, we're able to get well over 60 FPS into the 75 area. And actually, the models look really, really good. You can read text for the most part. Sometimes with the upscalers, you got to like look at it at the right angle or something like that. But they work. And the game actually, even with just with on low settings right here, it kind of blew my mind how good the game still looks like it really doesn't look that bad and guys keep in mind we are able to do this on a 220 dollars computer so this is looking really really good for our little experiment here all right everyone so what do you all think did i find a seriously good deal for someone that just wants to play hogwarts legacy at its minimum settings and enjoy the game i mean if you really look at what this machine was able to do with this brand new game that just came out this year you can see that we'll not only just be able to play this game, but a lot of other titles at 1080p as well. But I think that might be another video that we need to make another day. So if you have some games you wanna see me test with this budget machine, let me know what they are down in the comments below. And also, if you wanna see another graphics card tested in this machine to maybe further push its performance, 
Also let me know what you want to see down there in the comments as well. But anyway, that's going to be it for this one. Don't forget to go ahead and like the video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff like this. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.